midst of an epidemic. An epidemic which represents the greatest challenge to our health and our wealth that we've ever faced. I'm talking about obesity. Obesity is a worldwide crisis and it affects men, women and our children. And even our pets are getting fat. <laughs> so in Ireland, one in four adults are currently obese. And only two out of 10 of us are registering a healthy body weight. So not only are we seeing obesity rates increasing, but the levels of obesity that we're seeing are exploding. We've seen a 1,200% increase in BMIs over 50. A 1,200% increase in what we term super obesity. And this all starts in childhood. One in five Irish children are now either overweight or obese. And research has shown that obese children have an 82% chance of becoming obese adults an 82% chance of lifelong complications. And it's not just that they become obese, they become super obese. And it's because of this that there's no predictions that the life expectancy for our children is less than their parents. So this is unprecedented. We've never had a generation of children who have a lower life expectancy than their parents. And it's because with obesity, comes a whole range of diseases. So obesity has been linked to and causes diabetes, heart disease, dementia, depression, and up to 50% of all cancers can now be directly linked to obesity. So because of this, obesity is now killing 3,000 people in Ireland every year. And that's the equivalent of 52 double-decker buses full of people dying from obesity and its complications. So can you imagine if once a week there was a bus crash and everybody on board was to die? We would have immediate action. We would have new laws and new regulations. And yet the Irish government have failed to tackle the obesity epidemic. They've failed to implement expert policy plans for obesity twice. And it's because of this failure to tackle the epidemic that the World Health Organization are now predicting that Ireland will become the most obese nation among the 52 OECD countries by 2030. So within 14 years, we'll be the number one obese country in Europe, number one in the obesity stakes. And at this stage, nine out of 10 of us will be either overweight or obese. So only one in 10 Irish adults will be registering a healthy body weight. But this epidemic will affect us all because today it's costing us 3 billion euros a year. And that represents a quarter of our total healthcare budget going on a preventable disease. And this is fully preventable. And this figure is set to soar. So the question is, what's driving this epidemic? Well, we can look at three major factors our genetics, our activity levels, and our food consumption. So our genetics haven't dramatically changed in the last 30 years. But yet, as we've seen, obesity rates are increasing, and the levels of obesity we're seeing are exploding. So maybe we are more genetically susceptible to modern living. But this epidemic is environment-driven. Our activity levels have changed dramatically. We're doing less than ever before in both our work and our play. We're burning less calories than previous generations. We've become a society that's dependent on technology and hyperconvenience. And a nice example of this hyperconvenience is researchers in the United States have investigated how many calories we burn when we use the drive thru And it turns out it's nine. We burn nine calories getting our fast food. And actually, the majority of these calories come from taking your wallet or your purse out to pay the bill. And in an indictment of kind of this modern, hyper convenient society we live in, fast food chains are now letting customers pay for their fast food using their toll pass. So you don't have to burn the calories getting your wallet out to pay the bill. And this is for your fast food. So 
So we're consuming more calories than ever before. And we're burning less calories. And we are consuming more calories. We now know that we're burning about an extra 400 calories per day. And this represents a 20 to 25% increase in daily intake compared to 40 years ago. So we're burning less calories and we're consuming more calories. But not only that, the type of calorie we're consuming is dramatically different than, say, our grandparents' generation. It's highly processed and it's full of additives. And actually, these additives are completely changing our behavior towards food. So imagine this. We get SFI, or the Health Research Board, to buy us some cocaine. And then we put that cocaine in the water, and we teach a, a rat to press a lever, and now it gets some cocaine. So that rat becomes addicted to cocaine. It's, it's an addictive drug. Then after four days, we introduce a second lever, and this time, there's sugar in the water. So the rat now has a choice. Lever C will give it some cocaine. Lever S will give it sugar. And what researchers found was over the next 10 days, the rats will actually stop consuming sugar, oh, cocaine, and increase their consumption of sugar. They become addicted to sugar. And that's because sugar and cocaine act on the same parts of the brain. But sugar does it more intensely. So it's the same reward center, but a more intense signal. And it's because of this, we're consuming more calories. So we need more stimulus. This is a reward center of diminishing returns, which means that we need more of the stimulus to get the same reward. So we're burning less calories than ever before, and we're consuming more calories than ever before. And the type of calorie we're consuming is making us consume more calories. So what's the solution? Well, our current understanding around obesity is calories in versus calories out. If we burn more calories than we consume, we'll lose weight. And while in theory this is correct, meta-analysis shows us that this doesn't work. It tells us that weight is 90% irreversible for 90% of the population. So only one in 10 of us have the ability to lose more than 10% of our body weight. So then the big question is, why can't we lose weight? So I'm an immunologist, and I study the body's immune system. And the immune system is the body's natural defense against viruses and bacteria and even cancer. But what if, what if the body is protecting us against weight loss? Historically, the greatest challenge to us probably was an infection or cancer but it was starvation. So what if the body and its immune system has developed a mechanism that stops us burning too much energy to keep some for a rainy day? So my research focuses on the impact of obesity on the immune system. And in children as young as five, we've seen that obesity chronically activates the immune system and actually exhausted to the point where they lose key parts of their immune system. So in 2012, we undertook a collaboration with Harvard University to ask, what's the impact of losing part of your immune system? So we took a mouse and actually removed part of its immune system, a key cell called the natural killer T cell. But we could have removed any cell. And what we expected to see was that maybe that mouse might get more infections more autoimmune disease, or more cancer, like we see in our patients. But actually what we found was this. The mouse that's missing part of its immune system became obese and diabetic. So this suggests was that the immune system does play a role in body weight. So our collaborator, Professor Lydia Lynch, asked the question, well, what happens if we put back the immune system into this obese, diabetic mouse? And she did just that. She injected back in the missing immune cells. And what she found was the mouse lost weight and its diabetes went away. So again, suggesting was that the immune system does play a role in our body weight. And not only that, but we can actually use this maybe as a therapy for obesity. So currently the best therapy we have for obesity is a drug called GLP-1. And this is an injectable hormone. And in our patients, we might see 20% weight loss. So it's not the perfect drug, but it's better than 10%. But 
So we asked the question, is the immune system involved in weight loss? So again, we took our mice, one with a full immune system and one missing this key part, the iron KT cell. And what we did was we put them on a high fat diet, they ate all the bad stuff for 12 weeks and they become obese and diabetic and get fatty liver disease. And then we give our weight loss drug, GLP-1. And in the mouse that has the full immune system, what we've seen was weight loss and improvement in diabetes. But this is a weight loss drug, so that's expected. But in our mouse that's missing part of its immune system, what we found was a 30% reduction in the amount of weight lost with a weight loss drug. So again, this tells us that the immune system is required for weight loss. And of course, when we look in our patients, from the children as young as five all the way through to our biggest adults, they're missing key parts of their immune system. So this might explain why the energy in, energy out equation isn't working for our patients, because the system in the middle is broken. So what we gotta do now is, see can we harness the power of the immune system to tackle obesity? So that's the good news, but unfortunately there's no happy ending to this story. In our clinics at the moment, we're seeing children who at four years of age weigh seven stone. And by the time they are 12 years of age, they'll weigh 17 stone. And by the time they're young adults, 16, 17 years of age, they'll weigh 25 stone. And while these are extreme cases, they're far from isolated. So we have to tackle this obesity epidemic. We have to educate our children our parents and society as a whole, that obesity has to be prevented because as we've seen, it's practically irreversible. And if we don't tackle the obesity epidemic, some of our next generation of children are gonna end up on one of these buses. Thank you. <laughs>